My name is Russ Dill. I work with Texas Instruments, and I'm going to talk about the implementation of uh, hibernation on ARM. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the SWS implementation in the kernel, some of the challenges in bringing that to ARM, uh, an actual implementation, what work remains to be done, um, and some of the debugging techniques I used. Uh, I'm also going to talk about a SWS USP restore implementation that I implemented within U-Boot. Um, there's code at these links here, and there's also an uh, elinux.org wiki page linked there. Um, why would we want to do this? Uh, the simplest uh, reason is that hibernation provides a zero power consumption sleep mode. Um, it also allows you to configure a uh, snapshot boot uh, where you boot the uh, same hibernation image over and over again uh, for a faster boot. Um, it also shares a lot of the same implementation requirements with uh, self-refresh only sleep modes like the AM33XX RTC only plus DDR self-refresh which is where uh, they actually turn the uh, entire CPU off but leave the DDR memory in self-refresh. So when you come out of that, it's just like a power-up and you have to reconfigure everything again. Um, SWS USB has been the mainline hibernation implementation since 2.6.0. Uh, eventually, it seems like it'll be su uh, superseded by Tux on Ice. Um, that hasn't happened yet. I don't know what the status of that is. Um, it uses the swap device to store your uh, hibernation image, and it's got this requirement where half your system RAM has to be free for it to uh, snapshot your system. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, go ahead and stop me anytime. That's fine. Um, it can be used with the user space SWS USP component to support additional features. Um, you can encrypt your image. You can store it anywhere on the network, wherever you want, and you can also get uh, graphical progress on that uh, snapshotting. Um, this is a little bit convoluted diagram of the uh, basic procedure for doing suspend to disk that SWS USP uses. Um, it freezes your devices, which is analogous to uh, the device suspend in regular suspend resume. Um, on our implementation, on ARM at least, it's going to call it a CPU suspend, which saves your uh, CPU state, uh, saves your stack pointer off in memory. Um, and then we're going to jump over to SWS USB save that'll snapshot all our pages. Um, and then we're going to do a kind of a weird thing. We're going to call it directly CPU resume, which reloads the stack pointer and returns from CPU suspend. There's this um, in suspend pointer uh, that we set to one. We need, or not pointer, but variable. We need that variable uh, because it indicates to us that we haven't actually woken up. We've just returned from CPU suspend and we have to do the snapshot. Um, that variable is stored in a special region called the no-save region that doesn't get snapshotted. Uh, so when we restore, it's not going to be one. Uh, so we return our devices to running state, we write out our image, and we power off. So the restore kernel um, looks like this. It just reads the pages to memory, uh, quiesces all the devices, um, calls your resume code, which just takes the... Uh, loaded pages and returns them to their original location of memory, calls into the CPU resume function, just like happened when we snapshot the system, reloads the stack pointer, returns from that same point um, that we did before, but now the in suspend variable is zero. So we'll call the uh, restore functions for devices and return to running state. Um, so how does OMAP PM complicate this? Um, on OMAP, we have a lot of different configuration options for clocks, uh, power, um, it's managed by the uh, PRCM on OMAP across the uh, SOC. And this uh, diagram here shows a little more um, how that looks. It shows the voltage domains and power domains. Um, normally during suspend, we're going to lose power to per MPU graphics. Uh, but the current PM core, uh, the code, assumes that a lot of these things in the wake-up domain, you're always going to have power. Um, it's used, uh, we assume it has power, we use it for things like uh, power reset and clock management, turning power domains on and off during sleep, um, the pin mux configuration, any modules that have to wake the processor from suspend are in that, uh, in that power domain, um, and any modules that can, should continue running while the processor's in suspend are in that power domain. Um, so after hibernation, we have to restore the state, 
And some of it we have to do really early um, because things like the uh, clock uh, source timer are used by a lot of things like schedule timeout, um, even the print K um, timestamp. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just quickly go through this on a step-by-step -step basis, uh, how we did this on AM33XX. Um, power domain is pretty basic. There's just a, a single register that stores what power state that's in. So we have to restore the power state, um, wait for that transition to finish. Um, hardware modules, um, they get represented by OMAP, OMAP hardware mod. We can leverage that to restore their state, whether they're in uh, reset, whether they're enabled, disabled. Um, clock domains, um, we also have to restore their state. And again, we can leverage existing code to put in a, a save context, restore context function. Clocks end up being a little more complex because there's the whole clock tree. Um, so this initial cut here just walks the entire clock tree, saves the context, um, and a restore walks the entire clock tree again and restores the context of each clock. And then for each clock type, we have to put in a uh, save and restore context function. Um, it certainly, there is some room for improvement here. I'll, I'll talk about it a bit later. Um, so pin control, of course, controls how internal signals are routed to external pins. Um, for OMAP, we use a pin control single, which just has a memory map of the register area where those uh, pin control registers are, but there's no complete description of the registers. Um, so on processors where uh, only certain registers are accessible, because that's the only registers that are actually there, um, you have to know which registers are actually there. The errata on the AM33XX complicates that situation because uh, certain registers also lose context when the per domain uh, powers down during suspend. Current code handles that by just uh, saving those in the uh, PM code and restoring them uh, again in the PM code. But I wanted to work towards a more general solution. So uh, I tried to give the pin control subsystem knowledge of which registers are available and uh, which power domain they're in. Um, and this is a, a first cut on that. So I just listed the uh, pins as a pin function group by power domain. And then so once I did that, I could go into the pin control core and add a save context for a particular function group and a restore context for a fun function group. And then on pin control single, just walk through um, that function group to save and restore. Um, and of course, the current solution is a bit of a hack. It's probably not upstreamable. Um, so what's the way forward? Maybe a, a new type of pin control register grouping where we can associate a pin control res register group with a specific power domain. And uh, there's a problem with that, though. Um, the OMAP2 power domains are all currently managed in mock OMAP2. Um, so it's a little difficult to get that information out to uh, pin control. Um, clock source, clock event. Um, clock events actually already handled. Clock source, uh, fortunately, is already a suspend resume hook. So on suspend, we can uh, get our context loss count and our cycle counter and our resume. Um, we're resuming that really early. So uh, we directly restore the context to the functional clock there reset it, and reload the context. Um, SRAM on OMAP generally gets used for suspend code that needs to put the uh, memory into self-refresh mode. Um, OMAP3 already has a function for saving and restoring this context because they lose it. Um, I kind of uh, generalized that because their solution was to just recall all the functions that load code into SRAM again. Um, I didn't want to turn that into a if CPU is this, if CPU is this, if CPU is that. So I just made a general um, function there that copies it out and copies it back in. Um, other devices are already set up to handle context loss, but they need to know that their power domain lost power or lost context. Um, usually that's handled by the power domain code, keeping track of power states, but when we hibernate, the power domain code doesn't know about that. So we just add this uh, function in here that can walk through each one and increment their counters um, if they aren't already off. Um, oops, sorry. 
Uh, right now, with the uh, device tree conversion, a lot of the drivers that depend on the OMAP context loss, context loss function that get it through platform data don't get that anymore on DT-based systems. Um, so just to get this up and going, uh, I put in a, a hack fix. Just put an extern into OMAP PM get dev context loss count and uh, in the OF load functions just assign that. So there's clearly a need for generic framework for informing devices um, when their device or informing drivers when their device has lost power. Some drivers are already set up properly uh, to work when they lose context, but they're misconfigured and they won't work for hibernation. The uh, suspend and resume callbacks in platform driver will correctly call all the uh, hibernation functions, but if you put your suspend resume callback in dev PM ops, um, the power uh, the driver core assumes that you don't want to run any of the uh, hibernation um, callbacks. So there's a set system sleep PM ops you can put in there. So the correction here is just to uh, put that macro up in there with the uh, suspend resume pointer and all the uh, hibernation callbacks will get assigned correctly. Some devices of course do need special hibernation callbacks um, like the watchdog timer when it gets, uh, it gets initialized and run by the uh, running kernel and then the uh, re restored kernel doesn't know what state the watchdog timer is in and the watchdog timer works by writing an alternating pattern. So we just double ping it in the restore function to make sure we're alternating the pattern and not writing the same pattern twice. So we put all this together in the uh, AM33X PM code. Um, you can see our pin control save context there. We get the uh, interrupt controller save and restore from OMAP3 for free and uh, the other functions are all functions that we've added. So what does it take for the generic ARM hibernation support? Um, there's a patch set originally from Frank Hoffman, um, but uh, fortunately with the KEXEC implementation in the kernel, it was able to be compressed down quite a bit um, into a very small implementation. So you have to provide four basic functions, an arch suspend function, an architecture resume function, um, a function to tell the uh, hibernation code whether or not that's a page that should be snapshotted, um, an extra save processor state, an extra restore processor state. So our suspend function actually ends up being really simple, again, with the uh, k-exec code that's already there. Um, so our job is to just uh, save the current CPU state and uh, call the, um, the SWS USP save code. So we use CPU suspend to save our CPU state, and CPU suspend gives us a handy pointer, function pointer. Um, CPU suspend will call that function once the state is saved. When we're done saving, uh, snapshotting all the pages, we just jump back into a CPU resume, which will return from CPU suspend. On resume, um, there's a bunch of leftover pages that uh, the framework couldn't copy on its own because it'd be overriding kernel pages that are in the current kernel. So it gives us a list of pages to copy. Um, we have to be a little bit careful with this because uh, we'll be overriding our own pages. So we put our stack in that no save region. It doesn't get snapshotted, so it won't get restored. Um, we use the kexec call the stack function there that lets us call a function easily with a new stack. Um, our function itself will actually get overwritten, but the uh, hibernation code ensures that the resume kernel is the same as the uh, snapshotted kernel. It'll refuse to reload a mismatch. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, so again, we have some uh, k-exec functionality there, the soft restart function to call back into CPU resume. And that'll again return from the uh, SWS arch suspend code, but our in suspend variable in the uh, no save region will tell us whether or not it's, uh, we're supposed to snapshot the system or restore the system to running state. Um, and then with all that back work, the actual um, implementation for AM33X is really easy. Um, there's a couple of wrapper functions around all of the uh, hibernation code. Um, in this case, we just disable a PM idle. There's an inter function. Um, we just want to power the system off. Um, there's some 
callbacks for the uh, restore kernel where we put the hardware into a sane state before we want to uh, restore the image and then if that fails we want to put the hardware back into a running state and then for the kernel that actually gets imaged um, our pre-snapshot is going to be the one that saves all our, our extra states. So we want to save the per domain context and the wake up domain context. Um, and then there's the leave and finish function pointers. Um, these didn't fit in as well as I would have hoped, but it's pretty basic. Leave is just called after restoring from an image immediately after that. So we tell the power domains that uh, we lost power. Uh, we, we restore the basic uh, wake up context. And then finish is both called after this leave function and after snapshotting in the system. So it's to put the hardware back into the same state. Um, on the snapshotting system, of course, we don't need the per restore context, but it ends up being a no-op anyway. Um, debugging methods. What can you do because it's not going to work on the first time, the second time, third time, a bunch of different times. Um, it's a little difficult because the hardware is in some unknown state. On OMAP, you're not going to be able to talk to a lot of the registers because their functional clocks aren't enabled. And if you try to, the kernel's just going to hang. Um, so one easy way is to debug using GPIOs. It's pretty easy to configure the functional clock for those, um, to configure it as an output, and just have a piece of assembly code that you can move around um, to try to do a binary search of when the kernel's failing. If you're up far enough for it, you can use a print K. Um, usually, if you're up far enough for serial output, though, you're in pretty good shape. Um, open OCD is pretty good, too, except uh, if you're just looking at the PC, it's usually down in the weeds, maybe talking to some spin lock or something like that, so you really need a backtrace. Um, I never had the time to get Open OCD plus GDB running, so that probably wouldn't helpful. Um, and then once it's up and running again, you want to make sure that you didn't misrestore register state. So I used a devmem2 and a database of registers to just store all the registers before suspending and then look at them again um, after restore to see what differences there were. So another thing I did was um, doing the SWS USB restore directly from uBoot. Um, if we look at the restore process, it involves copying pages from a backing store from disk, putting them into memory, and jumping to an address. Um, uBoot's really good at that. Um, so restoring from uBoot can be faster than booting an entire kernel just to copy pages, but there's a couple of pieces missing. uBoot has no idea what address to jump to, and it doesn't know the contents of the no save pages, so it can't restore those to what they originally were. So our first step is to um, save the no save pages. It kind of, some irony there. Um, so we just do that in late init call so that they'll basically look like they would be from a uh, restoring kernel. Um, and then we store some physical pointers to them to make it really easy in a special CPU, function, uh, CPU resume function to uh, restore all those pages. And then when we're done, we just call the regular CPU resume function. And then that new uh, CPU resume function, we have to pass that into uBoot. There's this uh, SWS USB info page within the uh, hibernation image. So I just added on a uh, architecture specific uh, function there where we can tack on extra data. Um, so this is what an actual hibernation image looks like. Um, there's the first page of your swap partition there and we have a signature that tells us yes, this is a uh, hibernation image. And then it points to a linked list of pages that have sector pointers into our entire hibernation image. Um, our entire hibernation, hibernation image across the bottom here can be compressed with LZO, which fortunately uBoot has LCO support, so we support that. Um, there's an info page um, that contains our CPU resume pointer. And then the first part of the image is just metadata. It tells us where each one of the data pages needs to be load, loaded into memory. So our uBoot modifications are just to add a uh, SWS USB command that functions like the uh, restore functionality in the kernel. If there's no signature, it's just a no-op, it continues on. If it finds a signature, it restores it with the original signature in that page so that if there's a failure, um, you'll get a normal boot next time. Uh, if you really want to do snapshot booting, you can just replace original signature with S1 suspend 2, so the overwrite will just be a no-op. Um, 
So we have to read in all the metadata pages with the PFN mappings. Um, and at the same time, we're going to populate a bitmap of which pages are actually used to make it easy to uh, get free pages. Uh, we have to do all the uh, copies of data pages to memory. We have to be careful not to overwrite U-boot when we do that. And then if there were any pages that we have to copy to where U-boot was, um, we have to have a finishing function to uh, do that copy. This is what uh, the U-boot memory map, map looks like. Fortunately, it's very simple. Um, if we're above the vectors and uh, far enough below the stack, then it's free memory. Um, any memory we allocate within U-boot, it goes into that malloc space there. So our first step is to load those metadata pages. Um, we, we have a image page get next function that abstracts away the compressed image and uh, reads the pages, decompresses them, that sort of thing. And then we have a bitmap that we mark when we uh, find pages. Uh, we can then use that bitmap to get free pages that aren't in U-boot and aren't in the kernel. Um, so we build a remap index using those pages. And then we just go through each page, and if it's in the U-boot memory space, we get another free page and put it in that free page, update our um, remapping indexes, and then read that into memory. And then when we're done, we have to cap off our remap lists. Um, get a special d uh, page for actually doing the um, final copy. We put our, our finishing function in that page. We put our context in that page. And we put a stack on that page. Um, I added a call with stack function to uh, U-boot for this. That's actually the only architecture-specific part of this SWS USP restore code. And then that's the, the finish function. Um, it just has its own simple mem copy that it copies the original pages to uh, where they should actually go and calls CPU resume, which in our case is actually CPU cop resume copy no save. And then it's just like it was a restore kernel. Um, what are some of the things I learned? What could be improved? Um, the save and restore context functions are, seem like a bit of a hack. It'd be much better to uh, keep the context as we go and then just look at the loss count on resume. A lot of drivers already do that. Uh, there are a few problems. What about people who bit bang dev mem and modify registers? Uh, you're going to miss those. And then any registers that are initialized to boot but never actually read by the driver, um, you're not going to restore the state to what the bootloader programmed it as. So there needs to be some careful looking at the individual drivers to make sure they actually have the context. Um, some of the restore code currently, it's overzealous. We probably don't need to restore the clocks whose parents are disabled. Um, if the clock's parent is disabled, then it should also be not running just because it doesn't have a clock. Um, but we've got to go through an audit to make sure that when a clock driver enables, it does program the state on resume. Um, one thing that would be helpful for doing things like this, set up your debug framework early. Um, you're going to do it anyway. You're going to have a debug framework. Uh, might as well do it early so you're not guessing. And of course, pin control, we've got to properly integrate that with the system, uh, with giving it knowledge of where the different registers are, when it needs to restore the state, and that sort of thing. Um, how do we run time? Do you have any questions? Yeah, go ahead. When you were setting up, you were, you were clocking some state over to S. Yeah. So in the old map, do you normally present well, set it, up the MMU? It's actually reverse. Um, I'm copying state out of the SRAM because we're going to lose the SRAM contents. Right. But on AM33XX, it assumes that that's saved. So there's no current. Uh, Well, we do the resume for SRAM after CPU resume. And CPU resume is going to reload all our MMU entries for us. Is that what you're? But when you're popping stuff into SRAM, you're in MMU. Oh. Right. That's OK. That's so OK. you have mapped your SRAM into the MMU page tables at that time? Um, at initial boot, the um, SRAM memory does get uh, mapped with IO remap. 
Um, so an initial boot that's already mapped. So in the save context, it's we're running from with MMU enabled, that memory is mapped. And in the restore context, we've already run CPU resume, so MMU is enabled, and that memory is already mapped. That's, that's a standard whole map thing now. Yeah, for normally when you're running from SRAM, um, you're in suspend resume uh, context, so you can't take a lot of things for granted. But here, we're above that level, so we don't have to worry. Yeah. So um, I like the idea of using the image to accelerate boot times. Mm -hmm. so boot times. Can you see any reason why um, something like QMU could would be a feasible way of generating that initial image and then prevent an embedded system from having a boot that way? Well, your restore code is going to need to restore the hardware, so it's going to need to have the state of all the hardware for all the resume functions. So if your hardware doesn't match exactly what QEMU looks like, it's not going to work. Um, it's with U, SWS, USP, the user space component, it actually makes it pretty easy to make a hibernation image and then save that off somewhere and do something else with it. Um, the only thing with snapshotting is you can't have any file systems mounted read-write at the time of the snapshot. And you can't modify any of the read-holding file systems between restores. It all has to be the same. Go ahead. You mentioned that the AM325 is a web application situation with the suspended machine. It means that so it's not possible to wait for a simple system map without changing the kernel. So we have to change the kernel and compile the kernel of Linux to make it possible to wait the system map in AM335. Um, I'm not sure at which stage you're talking about, but all these are modifications to the kernel because none of this context save and resume support is currently there. Um, the only context save and resume for pin control in AM335X is it manually goes and saves each one of the uh, registers that get lost uh, when we lose power to the per power domain for, um, for pin control. Is that Go ahead. So have you considered uh, not popping all pages from the disk to the memory while they're shooting? Or maybe leaving certain pages for uh, demand paging um, to save the restore time? Basically. Yeah, that, that would really help restore time. But unfortunately, the SWS USP framework doesn't really have that functionality. Um, when it saves pages in the um, hibernation image, I, I don't think they're really swap pages. They just happen to be in the swap backing store. Um, so it doesn't really have that support. Uh, Tux on ice may have that support. I don't know. But yeah, it does take a few seconds to uh, restore all that memory. Um, what, go ahead. Did you notice any improvement on the while restoring from U boot versus doing the conventional restore? Right now, unfortunately, they're about the same because um, the U boot functions for reading from MMC and decompressing are not running as fast as the ones in the kernel. Whereas the kernel right now boots very fast. So it's actually pretty close right now. Um, but if you were to improve the U-boot functionality for copying pages and decompressing, then it should match uh, what the kernel can do and be faster. You don't have to boot a kernel. You don't have to read the kernel from disk either. Um, that's about it. I, I was thinking a little bit more about the uh, page um, on demand instead. Um, I think actually if before you suspend, you evict a lot of the memory to swap, that that memory will stay in swap. And then when you make your image, it's not going to image those pages because they're in swap. And then when you <coughs> resume, it'll load those pages on demand. I'm thinking only Linux for this. Um, I have no idea about any OS, other OS's hibernation formats. So I'm just wondering if this is something we can, because you're trying to make this more generic. And I think, 
<laughs> You're going to need to do a lot more for these other OSs. Yeah, I really don't know anything about the hibernation or suspended disk frameworks for other OSs. See, my, my point with this is that this only takes care of the TI part of it. Oh, I see, for parts. Yeah. Um, so I was I'm going to need to add my drivers and be able to use your framework and all that. So if this was just a demo board, that's great. But what happens to all the device drivers and things out there? I have to go and hack the kernel in order for this to even work. Right. This kind of went through what the implementation entailed for AM33XX and to fix some of the drivers that AM33X uses. So for your particular application, you can go through and do similar steps for um, your own SOC uh, to get that going. Uh, hopefully, if I'm able to get this merged, a lot of drivers will, just, will be improved to support hibernation if they don't already. Um, so if I'm able to get this upstreamed, it'll be a lot easier to add support to your own SOC. Any other questions? Oh, go ahead. When you talk about suspending of, of drivers, um, I, I guess I don't really know a lot about what that means. So when you, I mean, you're talking about platform drivers, you're talking about device drivers. So if you have a, a, a device driver, I mean, all of the state for all that, that's going to be handled by something higher level up, right? Um, depending on the device, some devices assume that when you suspend, that when they come back out, they're not going to have any of their registers stored. Um, so they're going to go and reprogram all those registers. Um, a lot of other devices, particularly platform devices, if they're in a power domain that doesn't lose power, um, and there's not versions of that same device in power domains that do lose power, they assume that everything's going to be fine, the registers are going to be there, they just have to bring the thing back up to a running state. So some suspend resume functions are just putting the device into a sleep state, bringing it back. Some are also saving and restoring state. Did that answer that? You're saying it depends on what kind of resource you use. Right. And how the driver's written, what assumptions it has, those sorts of things. I have one last question. Okay. Are you planning on having a mechanism where there's a, because typically when you can management, there's probably some area where there's a shutdown API and a startup and you know, where you don't have any system services that the driver has to figure out what to do and you let the driver writer tell you what needs to get done or what have you. Are you planning on adding that kind of stuff? To your um, the hibernation framework actually already has those uh, services. Um, there's these PM ops callbacks, thaw, freeze, restore, power off, that are hibernation specific. So when you run restore, you're telling the device, um, we just restored a kernel image to, or a system image to memory. Um, we don't know what the state of the device is. We don't know what the previous kernel did, but we need you to restore the state of the device and bring it back to a running state. Um, so those callbacks are already in there. And there's also the uh, power off callback. So when you're making a snapshotting image and you're done making the snapshot image, each device gets its power off callback called. Um, so those, those are already in there for device driver writers. Is that it? Okay. Thank you very much.